In this presentation, we'll take a look at balance sheet editing options related to the edit layout options. Let's zoom into it with Zero. Here we are in our Zero Company demo dashboard. We're going to be opening up our two favorite report, balance sheet income statement, going to the accounting drop down. We're going to be going down to the balance sheet report. Once it opens up, we're going to be right clicking on that tab up top so that we can then duplicate it. Then we're going to do the same for the income statement, going back to the tab to the left, going back to the accounting drop down go into the income statement down below once that report then opens up we will then once again right click on the tab up top so that we can duplicate it then i'm going to go back to the balance sheet on the right hand side we're going to be going into the balance sheet last time we looked at some of the options up top and that's going to be including the date range and the report settings and whatnot we also noted that we can change the title up top if we wanted to change the title up here then we have kind of the advanced editing type of options down here and that is, you can be found in the editing tab here, the little editing button, which is a little bit hard to see. Some people have a hard time to see it. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to remove those changes. So I'm going to say, and then, so you can also find this if I close this back out and we scroll down to the bottom of the report, you will find, or you don't have to scroll down to the bottom. It's always there. You got the edit layout button down here. So the edit layout button, and that'll take you into the same kind of uh, data input screen. Now, this is going to be kind of an advanced uh, data input screen, or it's got more functionality. So in other words, I'm going to compare this to QuickBooks. So if you compare this to QuickBooks, then QuickBooks has kind of more standard set settings that basically uh, are, you know, the most common type of reports that you're going to be using. But, but there may be less, there's less flexibility with what you can do with those, what kind of things you can do with those reports within the reports. Within uh, zero here, there, it might be a little bit more difficult to get to the kind of those standard kind of things, but you could customize it a lot more uh, given the settings that they have here. So we could customize reports in, in zero, probably a, a bit more detailed. So that's kind of nice. Again, it might be a little bit more difficult to, to put it together, but uh, once we have it, we can memorize that report and we can have more kind of custom reports. Whereas if we wanted to add some more customization to uh, QuickBooks reports beyond kind of like the standard uh, uh, reports, then we may have to do that basically outside of QuickBooks, export it to Excel or something and do some of the more, more of the customization here. Now, these reports, I believe if you go back to the first tab and I, if I go to the accounting drop down and we go to the uh, reports, all the ones that say uh, new next to it are going to have kind of this advanced editing features for it. So all the reports that have this new item to it are going to have this ability to do more editing options. Uh, is how this is working, I believe. Going to go back to the, which is most of the major, you know, reports. So let's actually close this back out right now. I'm going to close this out one more time. I'm going to uh, discard changes and then I'm going to duplicate the tab for the balance sheet so I can kind of go back and forth from the balance sheet that's not in uh, the editing section to the one that is. So I'm going to right click on this tab up top. I'm going to duplicate this tab again. So I have the balance sheet to the right and a balance sheet to the left, income statement to the, to the left of that. Going back into the balance sheet, then I'm going to go to the edit layout. So we're going to go to the edit layout. Then we have the information in kind of the edit layout mode on the left. And on the right, we have our basic uh, balance sheet. So I'm going to go back to the left. And then we have our items up top that we can use to edit on. And then we have the selected items that are going to appear to the right. So for example, if I was to select something here, then we have the items that are going to be appearing to the right. So if we, if we were just to kind of think about what has been done here, we could think about the formatting. We have the assets. That's going to be the major class category. Then we've got basically a, a another grouping. This is a, a group selection here, basically, that's called the current assets, which is obviously a typical kind of group layout. That's the default for the balance sheet that they're going to break that out into. Now, if you, if you wanted to remove that, you actually could. You can get rid of that and just say you want a simplified balance sheet. So, for example, if you wanted to have uh, just, you know, all assets and not have any kind of subcategories on the assets, you could remove these groups, right? I could make a very simplified balance sheet. So, if I want a summary balance sheet, then I might say, oh, I, I'm going to just, you know, remove this and then, and then cash and cash equivalents. I don't want any subgroups. I want all the accounts maybe. Or, or maybe I want that group to make it more simplified. And then I've got the accounts receivable. And maybe I don't want the fixed assets broken out. Maybe I want those in the same category so I can remove that. Long-term assets, maybe I don't want that in a subcategory so I can, I can remove that. 
and so on. And maybe the, li the liabilities, maybe I don't want current liabilities. I can remove that. Uh, deleting or ungr will remove the switch rules. I'm going to, I'll keep that for now. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and say uh, done. And if we were to do that, now, now note, it's not, it shouldn't save this to the, <clears throat> to the master file, right? If I still open up another balance sheet, it's only for this particular report, unless we were to memorize this report basically as the default. So if I was to then uh, save this at, as, uh, and, and make it the main report that we would go into each time, then it, it might change. The, but right now it's only going to be adjusting what's in there at this time. So notice, again, I took out the subcategories now for the fixed assets and um, the, the current assets, right? So those subcategories are gone. So this is kind of like a more similar, uh, simpler or summarized report that doesn't have those subcategories in it. If I didn't want that now, if I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of those. Well, I could, you know, just close this report back up and just open it up again, right? I'm just going to go to the accounting and open up the balance sheet again. And then it'll go back to basically the default settings of the balance sheet, which are going to be the zero settings on the balance sheet. If I wanted to save those changes again, I could save those and kind of memorize that report if I had some kind of custom report. So this is how we can make, you know, different variants of the balance sheet as we will do in, in future presentations. So that's one thing you can do with it. If I go back to the edit tab down below, another uh, useful thing is uh, if you use QuickBooks, then you might be used to like sub accounts, sub accounts, grouping accounts together. In other words, when I make new accounts, I might want to make a, like more accounts uh, than, than I want to show on a, on a balance sheet. So I might want to have multiple balance sheets, basically a summary balance sheet that I can kind of show people. And then maybe a balance sheet that's going to be more uh, extensive that gives more detail to it. So if I was to look, for example, at the balance sheet over here, and there's not many accounts, so I've only got uh, the accounts payable and the sales tax, right? If I want, you know, if I, if those are the only accounts to work with down here. So, so we have all these accounts in the settings because these are all the accounts that are actually, actually there, but there's not much detail. There's not much information in our test file here. So if we are, if I was to take those two accounts, if I was to take accounts payable, I'm holding down control and the accounts payable and the sales tax. And for some reason I want to put them in like a subgroup or something like that in uh, in the report so that I can maybe show one report that has more detail in the accounts of one report with more sub accounts. For example, if you, it just might make more sense on the income statement where you have a lot of expense accounts, you might want to have multiple expense accounts by region or something like three telephone company expense accounts, but then put them into sub accounts so that you can group them together kind of as one line item when you want a more specific report. So we're not going to do that basically with sub accounts. When we create the account here, what we will do instead is manipulate the different reports to, to group these reports together in, in some fashion. So I can highlight, you know, those and I can, I can uh, make a group uh, of them. So I can make a group and say liabil. So, well, let's just call it a test test group. And then it's going to be a credit positive debit positive. So you ha it's usually right if it picks the default because I'm in liability. So it's going to be a credit type of thing. But then you can see uh, here that it, gives us a little grouping for the test, right? So there's a little grouping for the test. And then if I was to say done, and then uh, go back to our report and scroll down in the liabilities. Now we have this grouping under under uh, the test items where those items are kind of grouped together in like a sub category. So that's that's one way that we can, we can use that kind of subcategory type of feature. Similar if you're used to QuickBooks that you would, in QuickBooks, you would basically set up another uh, account, you'd go into the chart of accounts and you'd go down to the uh, chart of accounts. And when you set up an account, you might make a parent account, which in this case, the parent account might be called just test, right? And that would create another little subcategory in your report. And then when you made, when you set up a new account, when you added an account, you would, you would be saying that it was a sub account, you know, of the parent, you're not going to do that here. But when you go to the report, you can put in these these sub uh, categories in this fashion, so you, you know it's a similar kind of of process or a similar uh, result in a, in any case. Now, what if you didn't want the detail to be shown here? Like in this test group, I grouped them up here, and so I have the group, the subcategory, and then the detail underneath it. If I just want to show the line item of just these items, I can hit the little triangle there, and then when I display this report, it's just going to show one line item that's going to be including those those amounts in it. So I can make a much more condensed 
uh, report in that way, right? I can go down and say, oh, okay, now everything's in, in that test, right? Or if I went to the, to the edit layout up top and I want to make a, a much more condensed report and I'm just going to say, hey, just tell me what the, you know, the current assets are, the fixed assets are, uh, the long-term liabilities and the liabilities and then the equity, right? And then that, or, you know, that's it. And then I can go, all right, let me, let me check out that report. Now I have a very uh, summarized type of report. So this might be where you kind of want to start things off. You say that, you know, people that aren't used to the numbers and don't like a lot of, dim give me the bottom line where you can just say, well, here's the assets, you know, total assets, fixed assets, liabilities, and equity. Oh, you want more detail? Then you can make another report, right? <laughs> that's that's going to be given. That's going to be given more detail, where you can basically open these these items back up. So then you can go back in here, and again, you can memorize these reports, whatever report you think is going to be most useful, and then you can kind of open these items back up and give more detail as you need. So you can get there's a lot of lot of you can see that there's a lot of variance, and so you couldn't do that with the sub accounts quite as easily. So there's there's going to be kind of more variance you can do with this format. Although it might not be kind of uh, as intuitive, but it just takes, it's just you got to get used to, to either of those methods. So that's going to be, um, now what if you wanted to remove a group? We saw this before, but now we made the group and now I want to get rid of it, right? Here's our test group. I want to get rid of that so I can click on it and I can go back to the trash can up top and remove it. So now I can remove it. It'll go back to its place. I can also reorder the groupings in here too. So if I wanted uh, to have a different order in my accounts, I can just basically take these accounts and drag them uh, to 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 reorder the accounts as they're going to appear on uh, the financial statement. So that's that could be useful as well. And again, that's nothing. That's something you can't really do in QuickBooks. I can't. You know, there's certain settings that are that are in QuickBooks, and and you know, it is what it is. So so that's more flexibility that you have to be able to group those. I can do it by the default, which would, you know, I can do it by alphabetical order, or I can go in there and try to figure out the, the biggest number or whichever one I want on top within a particular group for whatever reason. All right, some other options we have, we can add a text up top. So that would be a, like a note at the bottom. So if we make a custom form in some way, we can really customize the form here. We can put notes uh, on, the, on the bottom. So I can put note one on the bottom here. We've got the numbered uh, standard or none. So I'm going to keep the numbered on my note so we can have the note and then we have the schedule. So we, we can also have basically an added schedule down here. If we wanted to add a schedule again, more detail that can be added. So you can add the account with relation to the schedule. And I might choose like a specific account here for the schedule and update. So again, more customization we can put basically at the bottom of the report. So there's a lot of lot of uh, things we can do basically for custom reports there. Again, if we want to delete that, we're just going to delete that. And again, I have no fear uh, of messing this up too, right? Because this is this is not going to be messing up the major balance sheet report. This is just going to be something I'm, I'm going to save. I might save it as a custom report. So notice I'm just hitting the trash can, clicking on it, hitting the trash can as it populates on the right. Anything that's on the right that's populated represents what's on the left that has been selected, which I am then putting into the trash can. So then we have uh, could add a row up top. Now, if I add a group row, it's basically just the same thing as adding, you know, adding a group. And so if I drag it down, I can I could go down here and group things uh, in, in a similar fashion. So that's going to be that grouping option, which if you're going to add the group, I would think it would be easier. I'm going to close this to select the accounts you want in the group, as we did before, holding down control and selecting accounts and then, uh, add a group with that selection. I would think that would be the easier way to do it. You can also add a row and a formula. So if you wanted to put some kind of formula in there, then you could put a row in there. You could drag it up to, to where you want it to be. And then you could do some type of formula with it. Some, like you could do some kind of percentage formula, percentage of total assets or something like this on this type of, of form. So you can, you can insert, you could say, I want to say total assets. Uh, you know, I'm just going to put a random formula divided by, and then I could say, uh, you know, long-term, uh, long uh, total assets divided by current assets or something like that. You could put a formula in place and it'll, it'll populate there. So that's something, again, for some functionality you don't have, uh, you don't see in a lot of other accounting software. So you can add formulas within the report that really helps you to customize the report. I'm just going to close this out for now. Then we can do the columns. So I, so within the columns, we can have the date in the columns. So we have the dates. I'm going to close that one back out. Then we can have within the columns formulas. So we can have, have a similar kind of action where we could make, put a specific formula within the columns. And again, once I want to delete that, I'm going to select the column up top. 
and I'm simply going to delete that. But notice you have your functions up top, so you can make a very specific type of formulas up top. Going to close that back out. Going to hit the drop down. We also have the notes, so we can add notes. And again, there's the column for the notes. I'm going to cl click on the notes and close that back up. You can have in the columns the percentage. And this is going to be a common type of thing if we want to make uh, the, the vertical analysis and horizontal type of analysis reports for these percentage columns. We'll actually look at some of these in a bit in future presentations when we consider some of those reports. And those reports, again, if you look at QuickBooks, it has kind of like a standard kind of setup that you could do to basically do a horizontal or a vertical uh, type of analysis. But, and that's pretty, it's nice because you could, those are gonna, once you learn how to do them, they're not totally intuitive, but once you learn how to do them, you could do those. But again, you don't have quite as much flexibility. You can't just put, you know, formulas in the middle of the, of the report and have custom reports and add custom rows to them. You, you know, it's, it's more set. So you kind of have more flexibility here, but you got to kind of work with how to, how to customize these reports. Once you do customize them, however, you can make them more customized than uh, you can in terms of basically adding rows and different types of calculations within the report. So I'm going to close that back out and then you can go by region as well. So we can have the region information. So those are some of the, the major components. Again, we'll take a look at, at a little bit more of those with the, uh, with the percentages and, and some of the columns in future presentations. And we might take a look at some of the reports just to think about how we might simplify reports to have like a simplified uh, balance sheet or a shorter balance sheet, uh, uh, to easier to look out. And then we'll think about how to memorize these reports. But you want to get in here and, and mess around with this, play around with this, and don't be afraid that when you do so, it's going to mess up your entire balance sheet. Remember, it will not. until we, And we will get into the memorizing the reports uh, as we go. You'll, you'll have the default balance sheet. It'll go back to the default balance sheet. So go in here uh, without fear and, and, and make some reports that you might want to use. And those that are good, then you can save those or memorize those and uh, go back into them without having to customize them each time. We'll take a look at some of the percentages items in a future presentation.